This video is brought to you by Surfshark. Stick around to hear more about the discount that they're providing to the entire Upper Echelon community. Okay, today I want to do a bit of a different video because instead of focusing on an individual instance of publisher misconduct or industry news in general, instead of investigating a scam or a hacker collective, I want to discuss what I believe to be the greatest enemy that faces not just gaming, but technology itself in the 2020 decade. Most people will already be aware of this problem in some capacity or another, but today I want to try and expand on that surface level awareness because for myself, when I really dove into the topic, it was actually alarming just how dire the situation truly might be. I'll focus on gaming with added examples that pertain to a bunch of other sectors, but keep in mind that all of this will effectively translate to almost any complex technology company in the entire world. Microsoft, Apple, Dodge, Intel, you name it. The problem is a chip shortage. Now, that's been covered at length practically every day for the past year or so, but what hasn't been covered as much is the far-reaching consequences, the collective series of events that resulted in a sort of perfect storm, thus exacerbating the situation horribly, and just how long it might end up lasting, because there is no actual easy or quick solution here. They're just temporary measures that ultimately do more harm than good for the most part, as the supply chain just kind of falls apart. It all hinges on semiconductor computer chips. These chips are the backbone of literally any piece of complex technology on planet Earth. But contrary to popular belief, I asked around a bit before making this because I was curious and I myself actually had the wrong impressions as well. Contrary to popular belief, there's not one or two or a few chips in most computing devices. There are dozens, possibly hundreds. A smartphone, for example, does not just have a smartphone chip, it has numerous different semiconductor computing chips which pertain to all of its different functions. There are chips for memory, chips for the CPU, chips for the GPU, chips for the modem function, and a whole bunch more where I don't even have the technical knowledge to fully understand them. Basically, it's a complex web of systems where many of them rely on, or actually most of them rely on, semiconductor computer chips, and a lot of those chips are uniquely manufactured. This is where we get to the global supply chain and its very first problem, which is consolidated manufacturing. The United States produces about 12% of the world's semiconductor computer chips through the Intel company primarily. The rest, when referring to highly complex versions and the most advanced types, are almost exclusively produced by TSMC in Taiwan and Samsung in Japan. That's three companies in total worldwide that produce the lion's share of all semiconductor computer chips, especially the more advanced versions, which are used in almost all of the annualized hardware releases, such as iPhones and a whole bunch else like car models, console types, computers, graphics cards, etc. Now, normally that has been perfectly fine. There is a certain amount of elasticity to the supply chain in the sense that releases don't necessarily always synchronize, and there are very few events that catastrophically alter production on a global scale, but that all changed with the COVID pandemic. Another thing that people might not be aware of is the fact that with hundreds, possibly thousands of these semiconductor chip types, there is a significant amount of overlap between different industries. A new car, for example, such as a screen-heavy deluxe Mercedes SUV, will have hundreds of these chips for a multitude of different systems. The tricky thing, though, is that a lot of these specific chip types will be the same type that are used elsewhere for a certain part of a laptop computer, or a particular brand of smartphone for one of its systems, or a gaming console. That creates a problem because the car might have 95% of all the chips that it needs with no shortage, but that last 5% they don't have, and it literally kills production because the car won't run. That might seem like a minimally invasive problem, but it isn't because the manufacturing is entrenched and can't really be altered, and it totally shuts down production, meaning that the factory lines grind to a complete halt. They have to store them somewhere else, they have to refit them, they have to try and disassemble them after the fact to add the chips that they get later down the line. It's a disaster. Companies then get faced with a difficult decision on what to do in the meantime, because for many, they need to continue production. Okay, going on a bit of a tangent here, I have talked a lot about symbiotic relationships lately. Social media and scammers, sometimes certain devs and possibly hackers, plus a whole bunch more. But today I want to discuss the symbiotic relationship that I have with Surfshark. Surfshark is a VPN, virtual private network, and VPNs protect from many dangerous things. Websites often try to harvest your data, such as big tech, who then uses that data to sell access to you, oftentimes to scammers. Hackers and DDoSers often try to scrape your IP. Sovereign governments even will ban content they just disagree with, and even a simple site like Netflix will have different licensing agreements in different countries, allowing you to have different options just by switching region. Surfshark serves as a one-size-fits-all solution to every single one of these problems. Your data and IP will be protected, your freedom will be expanded, and your access to online content preserved as well. 
That's not all either. Surfshark has a number of uses for a great many problems, but for today, all I have left is that if you use the link down below and promo code Echelon, you will get 83% off and three full months free. Again, link down below with promo code Echelon for 83% off and three full months free. Big thank you to Surfshark for sponsoring the channel. So how does this impact gaming? For starters, gaming is smack dab in the middle of shipping a new console generation, and it's going terribly. I won't harp on the negative impact of scalpers, the failure to combat them by most major retailers, or the serious implications of a major economy, such as the United States, implementing disastrous policies that see everything from landlords being put out of business due to tenants failing to pay their rent, all the way to some tenants deliberately refusing to pay rent, even when they can, because there was a moratorium on evictions, and this is past tense, but it was a pretty substantial problem. That plus stimulus money jacked up unemployment, which led to many families earning far more money during the pandemic than they ever had previously, despite being home and not working, on top of so much more in addition to all of it, has led to a total disaster when it comes to standard shopping habits. The typical production models for a great many companies, especially in the technology sector, have been thrown out the proverbial window. And specifically entertainment spending has seen a massive boost in the process. But that's not all. In tandem to this economic hurricane, there has also been a financial sector explosion because cryptocurrency over the past year or so has gone absolutely ballistic. Crypto mining, a process by which computers are devoted to solving complex algorithms, has been rising exponentially with price, and what started as simple CPU mining before the activity was popularized and very lucrative became GPU mining, and now ASIC miners, like the Ant Miner for example, are popularized, which effectively created an entirely new viral industry that requires an ungodly amount of semiconductor computing chips. Think about it. New console release, worldwide pandemic disrupting supply lines that result in a shortage for a resource that only three companies on earth effectively create, at least the vast majority. Competition between not only established sectors, but brand new ones that are all attempting to get their hands on as many chips as possible in record numbers, plus a financial reality where all standard predictive models are completely shot. It's a disaster. Certain car manufacturers have literally been forced to shut down their entire plant. The relative production for new gaming consoles has been wholly unable to match demand in the slightest, and a lot of times people forget just how incredibly well connected everything really is. Imagine another very simple example, headphones. With everyone staying home for the better part of a year and remote workplace transitions becoming more common than ever, which lasts well beyond that singular year, new laptops and especially headphones are in much higher demand, higher than ever. For work, for music, for anything really, headphones are yet another device in a long list, many other devices fall into this same category, that uses a cross-section of semiconductor chips, especially for the much more advanced versions. And that's yet another set of companies that suddenly need to try and acquire more of these bottlenecked components than they ever needed in the past. That's just one product, one item. But when you think of the rise in demand for computer electronics across the board, in tandem with a supply chain disruption, it starts to sink in that the biggest problem facing the technology sector at all, and by extension gaming, whether it be PC, console, or hell, even phone gaming, is not monetization or creative stagnation. In the 2020s, it is supply and demand. Remember that first problem, consolidated manufacturing? Well, when the whole technology sector gets spun out of control, what happens when there's even a marginal disruption to one of those very few primary manufacturing plants? AKM, Asahi Kasai Micro Devices, I believe, that also manufactures semiconductor chips, had a catastrophic fire in one of their plants. That's a disruption in supply when demand is out of control. Samsung? Yeah, they have a factory in Austin, Texas, and were forced to shut down when a cold snap hit the city, losing something like $250 million in revenue as their chip production was suspended from that particular location. These kinds of things happen, periodically at least. They are uncommon, but they do happen. But the frequency of similar events across the world in tandem with current demand, it's not helping alleviate the current strain at all. An official from China, Tian Yulong, spokesman for the Ministry of Industry and Information Technology, if you trust that as a source, that's up to you, but it was worth mentioning, has explicitly said that the chip shortage will drag on for quite some time. And the Chinese government has simultaneously officially fined three chip manufacturers, domestic ones, over 2 million won for deliberately hoarding chips as an effort to help inflate prices further. The entire industry of semiconductor chips also operates on a manufacturing and inventory model called JIT, or Just In Time, which is aimed at keeping costs low by guaranteeing that there is very little overproduction. The risk of excess supply was, till now, seen as a detrimental option because it would mean storage costs and other significant losses. 
That strategy could not have been worse when you think about the perfect storm that we see right now. And it remains to be seen just how long the shortage will continue, but current projections have begun to span well into 2022, with some speculating a length even beyond that. Ford has cut the production of flagship models such as the F-150. General Motors has halted production at nearly all of its North American factories. Sony, with the PlayStation 5, and this is my favorite one, they denied a leak previously that they had cut their production by 4 million units in late 2020, with an original projection that cited a 15 million unit target by the end of the year. <laughs> but in March of 2021, Screen Rant disclosed that according to stats collected that very month, the PS5 was at a total of 6 million consoles sold. With demand being what it is, it is guaranteed that retailers are selling out of their stock when they get it. That means they projected 15 million units in 2020 and barely sold 6 million by March of 2021. Sony might not want to acknowledge a production cut, it looks bad, but I don't really know what else to call it. I understand that the optics of saying, yeah, we didn't just cut production by 4 million units, we cut it by like 9 or failed to deliver by 9 million units. I understand that's pretty bad, but I'm not sure it's better to just pretend that there isn't a severe shortage when it's so painfully obvious that there is. All in all, the biggest problem facing technology, and also gaming by default, is a production shortage because tiny, complex computer chips are missing from the global supply lines, which effectively cause the wheels of retail consumerism in the world of electronics while demand is higher than it has ever been in human history. Easy example, just look at Steam. New concurrent player base records progressively every few months, basically, which means more new players buying PC hardware than ever before or replacing PC hardware. It brings the wheels of consumer electronics when demand is higher than ever in history to a grinding halt or at best, at absolute best, a slow drip fed dispersal, which is not great when you have a seven year wait lead up to a new console generation, among many other things and new car models, and they're all competing for the same resource. That is the greatest enemy of technology in the 2020s right now, and it's unlikely to disappear anytime soon. But that's it. If you want to support, please consider checking out the links down below. There's a Kickstarter project I'm helping to promote, another platform to check out called Odyssey, which is a YouTube alternative. Everything is free to watch there. I do bi-weekly exclusives as well, and I announce them here on YouTube. There is a way to support for $5 a month on Locals. It's basically Patreon, but just a lot more secure and better. Another gaming YouTuber to check out, Surfshark, of course, with a hefty discount. Click that link down below, plus merch and whatever else, but I'll cut it there and stop rambling. As always, thank you all for watching, and have a nice night.